Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel and my name is Martin and uh, today I'm gonna talk about the uh, English exam, the TOEFL and how to pass this exam because I just passed my exam, thank God and it was a headache, it was so frustrating but everything passed so I'm so glad I passed and I wanted to share my experience with you so it might be helpful to you or any other body that wants to uh, take this exam in the next few years and uh, he wants to transfer his degree or study here in the United States of America uh, or to improve himself in the TOEFL exam for work issues or whatever so in order to take the TOEFL exam you have to take in your mind that there is a strategy and there is a way to study in order to pass it and first of all I want to be very very thankful and so grateful to God who gave me this success I am not worthy but he gave it to me and I have to return everything to God and to his glory I want to tell you that I'm gonna speak in English in these few videos Number one, to improve your listening and to improve your like engagement in English, uh, in English speaking. Secondly, I want to tell you that I might make, mis made, make mistakes while I'm speaking, like just now, but I'm gonna over it and I will go through it and you will find mistakes, maybe vocabulary mistakes, maybe grammar mistakes. I'm still making mistakes, but I passed this exam I'm telling you my strategy so you if you notice the mistakes you're good because you're more advanced okay so it's good for you and good step to keep going if I passed you can pass I'm just here sharing my experience with you because many of my friends and uh, workmates wanted to know what did I do in order to pass the exam and actually, as I told you, it's God's timing. And second, there is a lot of preparation to do. And I want to share what did I do with you. All right? I'm not telling you this is the right way. But this way led me to success. I got in reading section, sometimes I got 27, 28, 24, 23. These times I got, these numbers I got in in reading section others in listening section I got 24 28 25 many times so in the speaking section most of the time I was 23 24 25 I got it twice and the one that I passed the exam I got 26 which is the required uh, score in order to pass my TOEFL exam and transfer my pharmacy degree to the United States of America. The writing exam, uh, I got 24 and I started to do strategy. I got 25, 27. So I loved it. I loved this journey. Uh, even though I was so frustrated, I was so depressed in many times, but God is good and I was able to pass it and go for the next steps. I didn't finish yet but I will finish soon and God who started with me he will continue. So today in this video I want to talk with you about the reading section in the exam. What is the reading section and what is the strategy I did and or the strategy I, I followed in order to pass this exam and gain and the last exam I got I got 24. All right, so the reading section, it comes in three articles, sometimes in four articles, but if it comes in four articles, one of them will be not scored to you, but mainly three will be scored. And each article has 10 questions on it. And you have to answer these 10 questions in 18 minutes. And here is time management. So. What did I do? First, like everyone, I read the first two lines in the first article in my life and I hate it. I stopped reading it 
and I, I thought it's impossible, but it is not because you can pass it. How? First, engage with the topic. First, first strategy and first point is to engage with the topic. What does it mean? This means that you find your interest in the strategy. I want to know about this. So when you feel passionate to something, you will care about it and you will read more. For example, if this article about something important to you, about a reward to you, so you want to read every single detail because you are interested, you want to know what, what is going on. So here, find your interest in the article. So for example, if the article says or talks about dolphin, the relationship between dolphin in the ocean and the bat in the, in the sky. What's the relationship? What is in common between them? Oh, that's interesting. I want to know that. I want to know that. Sometimes you feel like, no, I don't care. No. In order to pass the exam, you want to care and you want to pay attention. So in order to pay attention, you may find your interest. Oh, I want to know about what happened in 1930 in Middle East China. What was the trading in the North America in the 70s? So when you find yourself interested and excited to know about the topic, you will find, okay, I want to read more. And then, then in this, at this moment, you'll find, okay, I am keep going reading. I keep going understanding and comprehending the topic. So first, engage with the topic. Let the topic talk to you. Let the author who typed this word talk to you. Somebody tell you in a history class, so what is going on in the history? In the astronomy, what is going on in the space here to you? Oh, what happened? What's going on with, with dinosaur? Let me, let me know more. And when you know these articles oh, and you find your interest, you will read more. Okay? And that's number one, in order to encourage yourself to read and don't be frustrated or depressed from reading. Number two, which is the main point, is to focus. If you find your interest in something, you will focus to know it. So focus, pay attention. And I'm gonna tell you that. I used to answer question, uh, the uh, reading question, I used to answer one question every day. And one time when I went to the exam, in the exam room, you know that it's like uh, there is desks and uh, all in one room, all people in one room, maybe 18 with you, maybe 5, maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe 25, according to the space, and you find yourself reading. One of the test center that I went to, the the women or the, la the lady that taking photos of you who before to go to the exam and telling you which seat you're gonna see in this desk was inside the room and guess what when i entered she took my the photo and she told me hey your desk is right here what you're you're sitting here actually you're sitting like me and you there is a ha like a half meter wall of wood just to separate us. And you're telling me to sit here in front of you directly and the whole center, some, some chairs were, uh, were free and uh, were uh, like, were vacant. There is no one over there. And guess what happened? Every single test taker came in, took the photo, Hey, adjust yourself and all this conversation in front of me. And here is your seat. Hey, this is your scratch paper. If you need more paper, let's just raise your hand. Let me know and I will come to you. All of this. And I was literally beside her. Literally. But when I noticed this, I didn't complain. Hey, let me change my desk. Can you change the, the computer? 
I didn't ask for that. Maybe I was, I had enough in my mind, but I didn't ask about that, which it might be my right to do it. But I didn't use it in that time for a reason, I don't know. But I decided to go the other way. I decided to, hey, the desk, these three walls, this computer in front of you is your main focus. You have to focus on the computer only and engage with the article. So I was reading like this, here the author says this and the author says that according to the question number, according to the article or according to the passage number one, passage number two, I go there and they search for the keywords and come back to answer. I was motivating, motivated and then I was paying attention, a full attention during the exam and I was able to focus and I passed this exam, this reading, the reading part for about, I believe if I remember about 27. So you can do it. It's not about people around you. It's about your mind and your passion, your heart. I want to know about this topic. I'm so excited to know about it and your mind. I'm not focused with anything, whoever around me, whoever go and out, done with the exam, didn't start yet, recording himself, practicing for speaking. I don't care about any people around me. I just care about this computer, whatever comes up and on the screen, I will focus on. So focus, pay attention, 100% attention. If you can do more than 100% attention, do it. Because it's about three and a half hours exam and you can pass it and never think about it. So pay you the most attention, pay effort during the exam. I want to pay attention to this one. Okay? So number one, engage with the article. Don't find the article is boring, is bad, is um, under qualification to your uh, your knowledge or to your, uh, to your studies, you studied pharmacy, yes, you studied pharmacies and, and this one is very low to you or maybe sometimes it's not interested to you because if you're interested in history, like you could have like ma major in history, but you didn't because you're interested in pharmacy and you rarely find something or topics about drugs or I don't, I didn't see any topics about drugs. So there is nothing about medicine or drugs over there. So you are not, so find your interest in this new topic. Expands your knowledge. I want to know more about it. Okay, so number one, engage with the article, engage with the topic. Number two, focus during the exam more than 100%, 100% and plus is gonna be wonderful. Don't pay attention to any people. Don't pay attention to anything, anything. And when I say anything, that means anything. Maybe disturb you or distract you. Focus and pay attention. Number three, while you're practicing, that's what I trained with. And while you're practicing, identify your problem. What is your problem? Sometimes you go to the TOEFL and you don't know what is your problem. So, you find yourself interested in, in the topic and you're paying attention, but while you're reading, you can't understand. Why you cannot understand? What stopped you from understanding? Think. Look at the sentence again. First, you may find one word or a few words that you don't know about. And when you go to search this word, you may find, oh, it's easy sentence. That's what I wanted to know from this word. Okay, so that's what happened. I understand it now. So the lack of vocabulary may be your first challenge. So what to do? That's what I did and I encourage everybody to do here. During the TPO, I'm gonna share with you the link of the TPO for people who wants to practice on this one, the, the Chinese website platform, and they have a lot of exams and you can practice and it's free, okay? So, you can go through all the reading article 
if you got bored and sometimes or oh, you need to focus on vocabulary this session so you can go through all the definition what is the definition of the word this what is the closing meaning of this word and find these questions and write that the the word and then google it when you google it find the synonyms and read the definition and listen to the pronunciation because it's a new word for you by doing this you will build up your vocabulary so for example i went through this one like all these pages i did the same so every definition equal what is equal the synonym in english everything in english okay so for example coincidence coincidence sometime like when i was studying in the beginning was my first time to know what is coincidence okay let me look it up so i looked it up i said okay i i found that synonym to it is called chance and accident so i put two synonyms beside it sometimes i put one word two words it doesn't matter but something close to it something known to me relevant to me common so i can know it okay so i i started to type all these words from what is the definition of from the reading article and i built a few words a few pages here doing the same thing and if i continue it i might like write more but i didn't but you can do it you still have time and you can work on building your vocabulary this will help you not only to answer one question what is the definition of the word no don't be superficial be more like digging deep so knowing other words will give you the ability to understand the full and comprehend the full article the whole article you will say okay i now i understand this story because i found the coincidence for this example for this exam it was what is the definition of coincidence but for another article it was in between explaining something and when you understand if this this situation happened by coincidence you will go to the question you find hey this situation was planned before that's wrong because you find the coincidence and you already know about coincidence means by chance accidentally not planned for it okay so i'm giving you an example so go through all the definition what's the definition of these words and write them down and write the synonyms equal to it one word or two words beside it giving you a chance and a, like a very good foundation solid foundation to build your vocabulary and expand your knowledge okay this is number one number two when you go to the sentence you might know every word individually but when you go to a compound sentence or complex sentence you cannot understand so because you don't know you don't know the grammar of the sentence the use of the grammar so what does it mean using two commas what does it mean with using which which for what and like what this represents so the grammar is very important i don't tell you i got grammar book like i downloaded grammar book and i got a book from the library it talks about grammar and um, i started to read grammar but i didn't read the whole book i didn't read the whole co like comprehensive books about grammar but what i did do like the famous thing what is the famous thing the 12 sentence the 12 tenses it's very important f condition it's critical and uh, it's critical or crucial and what else you may find um which when i use which when i use uh, that uh, sometimes even though uh, however represents but but you may use and explain to it in addition so when you say you find a lot of words like 
two lines and then in addition and another two line and the exam and the the in the exam the question says hey this happened because of this only but because you know grammar and you know vocabulary you say oh there is in addition because there is in addition so there is something also there is addition to this so it's not only so only wrong it's two things not one thing that help in this situation happen for example okay all right so and i work it on the vocabulary list i made my own list and sometimes i feel um lack of lack of uh, excitement or i don't wanna or don't wanna start uh, uh, like uh, studying or so so i went to, through this vocabulary i read them more i repeat them to myself so that okay encouraged me to enhance my vocabulary bank here in my mind okay also grammar sometimes i had to watch grammar explanation about uh, about something or hey we're gonna talk about the past how to explain the past situation how to explain something completely happened in the past or something happened in the past but still past continuous all of this i i watched this and i read about them many times to completely understand and fully comprehend these items so that's important if it's grammar lack uh, lack lack of grammar or lack of vocabulary you have to build them very well okay number four number four answer at least one article every day at least one article every day in the beginning i started to start with answering three articles and spend about 54 minutes uh, the, the exam's time but after that i got okay i find myself i passed this reading section so i'm gonna uh, read maybe one article only but when i was reading one article or solving one article i chose the most difficult article i didn't choose simple article because you find three categories simple intermediate difficult i use the difficult one in the red color and I answered this one because when you use when you train yourself to answer the most challenging question to you when you go to the exam it's gonna be easy for you to get under stress even because the stress works loading you and also the the exam situation and also the exam questions so all of this so when you train yourself to to answer the most challenging one that will give you advantage to handle it during the exam all right so how did i answer this question that's an important question all right here's my strategy in this tpo or all the reading question that i answered it's on the old style it has 14 questions and instead of 10 the newest one is 10 questions on one article but the old one has 14 questions on the all in one article so i used to answer the 14 question in 18 minutes okay this is number one number two every time i answer the question i don't skip it i review myself and when i review myself i don't review only how many uh i did wrong or how many i did right and that's it no when i review myself hey this one i did wrong why what kind of question i did wrong why did it wrong so what should i do the next time where was the answer in the article so the next time this kind of question i'm gonna search about the same location or in between so i know sometimes sometimes the keywords it's in the first sentence not the first sentence of the article but the, like in the sentence of article and then the answer of the question is the following sentence or the previous sentence 
So now I can understand, oh, sometimes he found it previously. Other time, you know, so when I find the key sent is a key word, doesn't mean that I'm gonna find the answer in this sentence, no. So that means it's gonna be around it. Maybe before, maybe after, maybe in the same sentence. So focus in this way, okay? So find, okay, what did you do wrong? And why you did it wrong? What to do next in order to pass this kind of question? All right? So next thing about like giving myself a score. It's a 14 question, right? And the last question is a summary question. It has three points, okay? So instead of calculating out of 14, I calculated out of 16. So the three points in the last one, I calculated individually. So question number 14, the first point, question number 15, the second point of the 14, question number 16 is the third point of the 14, all right? So the total is 16 points. And I calculate how many points I missed or how many points I passed. And sometimes, most of the time, I did four mistakes total out of 16. So that means I, I made about 12, 12 questions correct. So you get 12 divided by 16 multiplied in 30 equal you find it 22 and a half and you need in the exam for pharmacy exam you need 22 so by this strategy if you need more you can calculate more and limit yourself to bad this one i know it's not this is not the way that TOEFL exam answer but this is the way i i used and it give me a like average math where i am Okay, so I did this, 14 question right or 12 question right divided by 16 multiplied in 30, the, the score of equal 22 and a half. So I stapled my limit about four or less, the maximum question to, be, to do mistakes in four or less, four or less. And I'm talking about the most difficult question, difficult question. Don't go to the easy question and do four. Do less, try to do less, okay? When you go to the difficult one and you do four mistakes only, at, at the most, you're good. You're in a good, you're in advanced way, okay? I promise, I tried this one with me and it works. And try the hardest one. Don't try the easiest one. But if you are still a beginner, try all of them. Try the easy and intermediate and the hardest. But if you find yourself you're passing this score and you're focusing on another section, okay? So just to keep yourself updated, answer the hardest one in a specific time. Time management. 18 minutes for... 10 questions that's in the exam but in practicing 18 minutes for the 14 question okay and do this math sometimes in order to understand and build your vocabulary understand the sentence after all you need more time take your time take your time no problem to spend five minutes in one question no problem to spend 10 minutes if you're doing progress if you knowing new words, if you googling them, if you understanding them, if you repeat this word and go back to the same sentence, if you use hey, what that what like what tense did the uh, did the author use here? It might be past tense, complicated, compound. What's the sentence type? So that gives you more idea about what you are reading. And when you understand this, you can easily understand what the question needs. So I'm focusing now on the question. Number, uh, number six, number six is to 
uh, not time management only, but also to to focus. I forgot about it. Number six, guys, you have to. Oh yeah, read the question and then go to the article. Don't read the whole article. If you are training, don't read the full article. Read the question first. Identify the keywords in the question. What you are looking for? What's the question asking you? Asking you about except? Asking you fact? Asking you about definition? Asking you about summarize? Asking you about insert question? Asking you about What's the question asking about? How? What? Which? What's the question asking about? So, you go to the, ex to the article, to the ex exact paragraph, and search. Where is the keyword of this one? Okay. If you're asking why, so you find in the paragraph, as a result. You find because. You will find therefore. So that this is the answer of the question. Okay. Why did the um, the ancient uh, pharaohs build the pyramids um, in the desert? And then go the pharaohs built the uh, built the pyramids uh, in the desert land because there was no rain and by this way they can stay for a long time. So we find because. There will no rain, and there, there, there is no rain, and there is no like something to demolish the uh, and make it stable for for years. Okay, so this is the way and strategy to answer the exam. Briefly, you have about six strategies to answer your reading section. First, engage with the topic. Engage with it. Find your interest in it. Second, focus. 100%. De be determined to understand, to pay attention to the article, to know what is going on in this lecture, in this article. Three, identify your problem. Is it a lack of vocabulary or lack of grammar? And build this. Build what you didn't, you, what you missed. Build it. And write it down to review it the next time. Number four, answer at least one question every day. Every day. Number five, answer the hardest question, the most difficult question to get yourself trained for stress and uh, sneaky words and sneaky ideas and you can ob observe them. And absorb this idea very quickly. Number six, last time not the least, don't read the full article, but just go directly to the question and find the keywords and look, search about this one. Okay? A few minutes, in a few minutes, uh, I'm gonna tell you also some hints. The first hint about if you found a big word, like more than 11 letter, a name of an ancient dinosaur or an Asian uh, king in the past, and it's complicated, you can't even pronounce it, what to do? I used to make fun of it, so I can pass it. So, first of all, you have one option. First, you may like give a abbreviation to this word sometimes you get the first three letters or whatever pronounce in your like masalan ba balumi whatever word it is and i find this bamboo okay bamboo okay it's not bamboo but i find the bamboo easy to to say it. no one will judge you it's a reading question not speaking question so no one will judge you here so just get whatever you need to understand. 
But first, understand what is your babu. Whenever you see this complicated word, sometimes it's one or two words in the article. So whenever you see it, you know what you're talking about. So I'm saying babu to make it easy for me to understand and go, go on. But I understand that Zabu, this babu is the name of a king. This babu is the name of a country or a name of um, fortress or whatever. So by this way, I can, I'm just understanding. I'm not paying attention, trying, spending seconds or one minute trying to pronounce a word I don't care about. But I care about what this, care, what this word represents. So when you understand what this word represents, it's okay. Say it, whatever you say, just, just catch it. When you read, when you go to the reading section, read the, the title. Very important. Read the title. If you understand what is the title about, like civilization in South America. Okay. It explains everything. It's going to talk about civilization, something, civilized people, civilization, all of this. Okay. In South America. So, boom, I direct my mind. But if I don't know about the article, what should I do? When I read the title of the article, I read just the first sentence of the, of the article. La 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 is giving you a definition of the title of the article. He will give you a definition. Okay, because it's an English exam, not information exam. Okay, so he will give you the whole information. So if you don't know about it, just read the first sentence very quick. Like, what is the definition of this? Oh, you find, oh, it's a uh, people in uh, North Africa. Okay, I got it. It's a country in the Middle East. Okay, I got it. It's, um, it's a dinosaur lived in the ancient years. Okay, I got it. And go on and go on. Don't stop yourself and go to the question and search on it. Okay? I hope this lecture, I know it's condensed a little bit. I hope this lecture helped you to understand. Also, if you have a question about reading section, please write it down in comments and tell me what's challenging you, what's challenging you. And when you tell me, I can maybe remember some, a situation of mine and remember a strategy that I missed in this video and I can post it in another video or can reply back to you. And I wish you to pass your TOEFL soon and get rid of this stress and this frustration. Good luck and God be with you. Bye.